Hi everyone, I'm back with another question from Young and Friedman's University Physics Textbook. I have question 3.54 here, an errand of mercy, let's get started. So an airplane is dropping bales of hay to cattle stranded in a blizzard on the Great Plains. The pilot releases the bales at 150 meters above the level ground when the plane is flying at 75 meters per second in a direction 55 degrees above the horizontal. How far in front of the cattle should the pilot release the hay so that the bales land at the point where the cattle are stranded? Okay, so as per usual, let's get started on a diagram. And for this diagram, um, let's do it in this bottom left corner. So I'm just gonna draw a plane here. So this is our plane. Um, and we know that it's 150 meters above the level ground. So we have 150 meters there. And it's flying at 75 meters per second above 55 degrees above the horizontal. So this is 55 degrees above the horizontal. This is going to be 75 meters per second. And we have, um, so we have some sort of cattle right over here. I am a little bit nervous drawing these cattle, but okay, this is going to do stick figures. Okay, so I just drew one, but we get the idea that there's going to be um, a few different cattle right over here. Okay, so this distance we're gonna say this is X. And we need to know how far in front of the cattle should the pilot release the hay so that the bales land at the point where the cattle are stranded. So we know that if we let something go from the plane um, and it's flying at 55 degrees above the horizontal at 75 meters per second, it's going to have some sort of X component and it's going to have some sort of Y component. And we know that due to gravity, acceleration due to gravity is how long it's going to take this um, this item to fall all the way to the ground, right? So we have gravity that's influencing it, but then on the x for the x direction we know that it's just going to be a constant um x component of 75 meters per second right so maybe we can go ahead and right now we can write down all our unknowns and our knowns so then we can have a better idea of how to solve for this x okay so we know that in our let's split this up into two parts so our x so in our x direction we know that our distance in X is going to be equal to 75, or actually, sorry, our initial speed or velocity, because we have direction as well. So um, our initial velocity is going to result in a speed in the X direction of VI X is equal to 75 cos 55. And in the y direction, we have 75 sine 55. And that's going to be our initial speeds, right? And this is going to be in the positive direction. If we're assuming this is positive and this is positive, then anything that's this uh, going downwards is going to be negative or left is going to be negative. So we're just setting this as our positive x and this as our positive y. Okay. Oh, and that's just rewrite that. Oh. Okay, there we go. So what now what else do we know? In our x direction, we don't really have any acceleration, right? Because we're just we know that whenever we have some sort of projectile, it's the x direction is always this constant and really it's just the y direction that has gravity working on it or you know we have the acceleration due to gravity and that's what's causing the speed to change but in the x direction the speed's not changing and so we have a acceleration in x uh, zero meters per second so actually we can just um sort of ignore this but in the y direction we have negative 9.8 meters per second squared and 
what else do we know? We know that the, the distance in the y direction is going to be 150 meters, right? And however long it's going to take to travel this 150 meters. So sorry, I actually drew it higher than it is, but it, this is not, um, let me let me actually redraw this right over here. So this is actually the height, right? The only reason I drew this was just to kind of illustrate that we have some y component in the speed, but that's that's not actually how high it is. How high is just 150 meters because we said we we have that in the question. Okay. So in dx, we don't know, but that's what we're actually trying to find out. Okay. So one thing that's actually going to tie both of these parts together, like I said, is going to be the time, right? Because the time it takes for this hay bale to fall all the way to the ground is going to be dictated by 150 meter, that 150 meter distance. And then that time, we can just use our simple speed equation, right? So speed is equal to distance over time because we have time. We, and we have our speed, right? Because we can get our speed from here and then our time for what we solve in the y direction right there. So that's how we can figure out the distance next. So that's how we're going to solve dx, right? Okay, so let's do that. If we have dy, we have three pieces of information and we have one unknown, which is t. So we can use one of our kinematic equations. So let's do that. So we're gonna use this one. D is equal to V naught T plus half of AT squared. And then we know that this is going to be negative 150 meters, right? Because 150, we're going downwards. The hay bill is moving downwards, so it's gonna be negative 150. So let's, let's write that down. Negative 150 is equal to 75 sine 55 t plus half of negative 9.8 t squared. So if we solve for t, we can plug that into our quadratic equation, or I just use an online calculator to just plug this in and get our roots for t. I'm getting the positive value for t that I get is 14.631. Remember that we get a positive and negative value. So we're gonna take the positive one because we can't really have negative time, right? So we have our t right over here, and that's how long it takes for this hay bale to, to fall 150 meters to the ground. So then if it takes that much time for it to fall to the ground, that means we need to release it one 14 point, sorry, we need to release the hay bales 14.63 times the speed in the x direction before we see the cattle so that it falls in time, right? So I'm just going to draw with red. This is sort of how the motion is going to look like. And let's plug in our dy, or sorry, let's let's solve for our dx. So dx we said is equal to vx vix times t. So dx is equal to seventy five sine. Oh, seventy five cos. Sorry about that. Seventy five cos. 55t, which is 14.6311 seconds. Sorry, seconds right there. Don't forget your units. And dx turns out to be 629.4 meters. So if we release this hay bale 630 meters before we see the cattle, that's that that should be enough time for it to land right in front of the cattle when we want it, right? So just to recap, we first what we need to do to solve this question is we need to see how long it takes 
for the hay bale to fall to the ground using all the information that we have in the y direction and then using time that we get from there, right? So from our three knowns and one unknown, we know that time it takes to reach the ground is going to be the same, right? Because this is, it only takes one time to reach from the hay bale, from the plane all the way to the ground. And so we can use that time in and break that down into two components. So when we solve for time in the y component, we also have time in the x component because time is the same, as I've said before. And we plug that in. So we got 14.6311. And then we plug that in to our x direction. And then we got 630 because we did, we just used our simple speed equation, our speed times time, and that's our distance. So 630 meters. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments or send me an email. Um, I hope this was helpful. And if, and if it was, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you so much and see you next video.